Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will be diving into the world of Terraform, which is your go-to tool uh, when we talk about your infrastructure as code. So Terraform has been one of the very um, uh, sought after tool uh, whenever we talk about automating your infrastructure setup on any of your uh, cloud platform. So in this particular session, we will be looking at top 15 interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, Terraform. Now, whether you are preparing for an interview or you're just eager to expand your knowledge on your Terraform, then you are in the right place. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question we have is, what is Terraform and how does it differ from other infrastructure as code uh, tools? Now, your Terraform, that's your open source um, infrastructure as code tool that you have. And this was developed by the company HashiCorp, all right? So this is completely open source. You don't have to uh, purchase anything. You can install this and you can use it without any cost. And this is one of the very popular infrastructure as code uh, tool that we have in the market. Now this Terraform, it allows us to define our infrastructure using a declarative configuration language. So the syntax of your uh, code is very simple and uh, it, it uses your declarative uh, language and it helps you to set up your infrastructure on various platforms. Unlike your other tools, Terraform supports multiple cloud providers and on-premises infrastructure, offering a unified approach to managing diverse environments. So you can use Terraform to set up the infrastructure on the AWS platform, Azure, GCP, any cloud platforms you have. You can also use this to manage the infrastructure in the on-premises. The next question we have is explain the concept of declarative syntax in Terraform and how it contributes to the infrastructure uh, management. So declarative syntax is what we use in Terraform to describe the desired state of your infrastructure. So basically, what do you want? So let's say we are taking an example of AWS. So you want a VPC, you want an RDS, you want an EC2. So all that infrastructure, we define that by making use of a declarative syntax. So uh, by writing this code, we don't have to specify the step-by-step -step process to achieve it. Terraform takes care of that uh, for us. So Terraform will interpret the configuration, the code that we have writ uh, written. And Terraform will determine the actions that is required to uh, create that infrastructure, to create the actual state that we have defined, which will simplify the management of your infrastructure. So all we have to do is write the code and then your Terraform will take care of interpreting that code and then uh, taking the actions to create the desired infrastructure for us. The next question we have is what are the key components of a Terraform configuration file? So when we talk about your Terraform configuration files, there are some important uh, components that uh, we generally end up writing. So we have the provider block, we have the resource block, we have the variables, outputs and your uh, provisioners. All right. So generally talking, these are the different different blocks we will have in your configuration files. Out of this, the main components we have is your provider block where we specify uh, uh, the platform where we want to create the infrastructure, the resource block to create the resources and then the variable block to uh, declare all of our uh, variables. The next question we have is how does Terraform maintain state and why is state management important in infrastructure as code? Now, Whenever we are creating our infrastructure using Terraform, your Terraform needs to maintain the information about the infrastructure that your Terraform is managing, right? So this is where Terraform uh, maintains a state file. By default, it uses this naming convention, which is a Terraform.tf state. And this is where it keeps track of all the actual resources that your Terraform has created. So let's say you have written a configuration file, which will launch an EC2 instance and an RDS instance. Now, does it, uh, Terraform keeps track of it. So it will maintain that information in this uh, state file. Now, this state file is very crucial because this is what your Terraform uses to understand uh, the existing infrastructure that your Terraform is managing and also plans any changes that we have defined accurately without modifying the resources unintentionally. So maybe now let's say we're adding one more resource block to create a VPC. Now, your Terraform will know that it has already created an EC2 instance and an RDS by referring the state file and it will only make the changes to create your VPC. All right. So that is where your state file is very important. The next question we have is describe the process of initializing a Terraform project and what does the Terraform init command uh, do? Now, 
whenever we write our configuration files or whenever we start working the terraform the first thing that we have to do is we run the terraform init command now what this does this is simply initializing your terraform project now what this command does is this will download all the necessary providers and also initializes the backend and prepares the project for further action so uh, let's say before we create your EC2 instance or your S3 bucket or your RDS, we will need to uh, initialize the project so that your Terraform will download all the necessary plugins, the provider, so that it will start creating the resources for us. Okay, so this is typically the first command that we run in a new Terraform configuration. It's a, and it's a one-time uh, command. You don't have to run it every time unless you have some changes in your providers. We just run it once, and this is the first command we will run, right? The next question we have is what is a Terraform provider and how does it facilitate interactions with different infrastructure platforms. So Terraform provider is what we use to specify the platform where we want to create our infrastructure. So if you want to create your infrastructure on AWS, we will have to define that accordingly. Azure or GCP. So what is your platform? Where do you want to create the infrastructure? So here, for example, if you see, I have defined my provider which says AWS. So this will tell my Terraform that I want to create this infrastructure on the AWS platform. Okay, so that is where we make use of your uh, provider block. So this basically interacts uh, or basically abstracts the details of the underlying API, allowing Terraform to manage the resources on various platforms using a consistent configuration uh, syntax. So Whenever we want Terraform, it's a way to tell Terraform that we want to create the infrastructure on the AWS platform. The next question we have is explain the purpose of the Terraform plan command and what information does it provide and why is it valuable? Now, Terraform plan command can be used whenever we want to do a dry run of the changes that we are making or if you want to get a preview of the changes that your Terraform will do when we actually execute that code. So this can be used to uh, check or do a preview of the uh, infrastructure before taking the actions. All right. So that's where we can make use of your uh, Terraform plan. So this will provide us with a detailed overview of the resource actions that your Terraform will do as to whether it is going to create any re new resources or modify any new resources or destroy any resources. It gives us a dry run of those changes. So this can be used to validate whether Terraform is doing the intended changes or not. Or is it destroying something uh, unintentionally? We can preview that. And if you're okay with the plan, then we can go ahead and apply those uh, changes. So this can be valuable for reviewing and validating the changes before we apply them. So this is very important whenever we want to validate whether the Terraform is doing the uh, right thing or not, whether it is following the right uh, uh, changes or not, we can make use of a Terraform plan for that. The next question we have is how does Terraform handle dependencies between resources and what is the significance of the Terraform uh, graph? Now, Terraform uses a directed acyclic graph to repre represent the resource uh, dependencies. All right. So whenever, uh, let's say when we run the Terraform plan command, it will show us the graph of the order in which the resources are going to be created or modified. So this graph will help Terraform understand the order in which the resources needs to be created and also understand the dependencies that your resources have ensuring a logical and consistent provisioning sequence. So your Terraform takes care of that. We don't have to tell Terraform the order in which the resources needs to be created. Terraform is intelligent enough to understand the order in which the resources needs to be created and that information is displayed in the uh, directed acyclic graph. All right, so Terraform follows that. The next question we have is what is the difference between Terraform's provisioners and remote exec provisioner? So provisioners in Terraform can be used whenever we want to execute any scripts or any commands on the resource that we are creating. So for example, let's say you're launching an EC2 instance and you want to run some commands or scripts on them, we can make use of your provisioners. Now the remote exec is one of the provisioner we have. Now this also allows us to run scripts on the resources, but this will be via SSH. So basically we will need to give the authentication. The Terraform will uh, SSH to the remote machines and then run the scripts that we have provided. 
For example, here if you see, I've given this uh, provisional remote exec. So I'm running certain commands. So in this case, I am giving execute permission to the script and then I'm executing that particular script. So this will use this connection that I've defined here. So it will do an SSH using the username and the private key host on the port number. It will establish an SSH connection and then execute the script for us. So that's where we can make use of your remote exec. The next question we have is how can you manage sensitive information such as API keys in uh, Terraform configurations securely? So for this, we can uh, make use of your environment variables or we can maintain the information in external files. So any sensitive information we have, we can store them. Now Terraform, it supports your variables and also your data sources, which can be used to retrieve sensitive information from secure sources. For example, let's say we are using secrets manager to store your uh, password or any uh, uh, sensitive data. We can get that information by making use of your data sources. So data sources will fetch that information for us and then we can refer it within your configuration files. Now your Terraform also uh, recommends that we make use of your HashiCorp vault for your secret management. So on AWS, you have your secrets manager service. If not, you can also make use of your HashiCorp vault to uh, manage your secrets. The next question we have is what are Terraform workspaces and how can they be useful in managing multiple environments or configurations? Now, Terraform workspaces can be used when you want to manage uh, multiple instances of your same infrastructure. So let's say you have uh, one set of configuration files. Now you want to execute this in parallel in three different environments. We can make use of your Terraform workspaces for that. So each of these workspaces will have its own uh, uh, state file, which enables you to maintain separate configurations for separate environments. So let's say, for example, I can use this uh, workspace to uh, create the infrastructure in the dev environment, the second workspace to create the infrastructure in the prod, the third workspace to create the infrastructure in the UAT and then so on. Now the advantage of this is I don't have to duplicate the code. Uh, I'll have the same code, but then I'll have logical isolations uh, by making use of your workspaces. And then each of these workspaces will have its own state file. All right, so we are not overwriting other environments. The next question we have is explain the concept of Terraform modules and how they contribute to code reusability and maintainability. So whenever we talk about making your uh, Terraform code reusable, we talk about your Terraform module. So Terraform modules can be used uh, whenever we want to make our code reusable. These are nothing but these are your encapsulated units of your infrastructure code. So we can call them multiple times with the different inputs, which mainly promotes your code reusability and your code maintainability. So in Terraform, whenever we talk about uh, making your code reusable, we talk about your Terraform modules. All right. So under this, we will write the main configuration files once and then we can start calling them any number of times to create the infrastructure. So modules abstract complex configurations, making it easier to share and manage the infrastructure code. The next question we have is how does Terraform handle updates or changes to existing infrastructure? And what is the purpose of the Terraform apply command? So the Terraform apply command is what we use to execute the configuration files. All right. So whenever, so essentially what happens is when we run this Terraform apply command, it will analyze the current state and the desired state. And then whenever it finds any differences between the desired state and the current state, it will start creating that infrastructure. It will start taking the necessary actions to create that infrastructure for us. So whatever the configuration files we have created, whenever you want to execute that, we make use of your Terraform apply. So Terraform apply will take the action and create the infrastructure for us. So your Terraform apply command can add, modify or destroy your resources based on the changes that it detects in the plan uh, stage. The next question we have is what is the significance of Terraform providers, uh, version constraints and how can they be managed in a Terraform configuration? Now, version constraints can be used when you want to ensure that you have compatibility with different provider releases. So, um, you know, ensuring, let's say if you're on AWS, you have a very specific uh, Terraform version requirement, you can make use of your version constraints for that. 
so they can be specified in the provider block to define acceptable versions ensuring that terraform uses the appropriate provider version for the configuration so this can be used to put a restriction telling terraform that it has to use version 3.2 or it has to use version 1.2 to create the infrastructure okay so that's where we can make use of your version constraints the next question we have is describe scenarios in which you might use terraform remote backends and the advantage they bring to the state management so we already discussed about your state file so state file is what your terraform uses to uh, maintain the information about the resources that your terraform is managing now how do we manage this state file so for this we have something known as your remote backends which can be used to store your uh, remote state files remotely so instead of storing the state files in a local machine we can store it in a remote location which can be accessed by multiple people now what's the advantage of this one it allows collaboration so multiple people can work with it it also allows you to share the state file and also it allows the locking of your state file so that it does not overwrite other developers changes so whenever let's say i am doing a terraform apply the state file will be locked others will not be able to use that particular uh, state file now some of the popular remote backends that we have includes your s3 buckets azure storage and hashicorp also provides an option which is your console so if you are on the aws platform s3 is generally what you'll end up using as your uh, remote backend where your state file will be stored so that brings us uh, to the end of your top 15 interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, terraform once again, Terraform is one of the very popular tools that we have when we talk about your infrastructure as code. And I really hope you found these questions helpful. Um, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And before you leave, give a thumbs up if you like the video. And uh, don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay in the loop. Um, until next time, happy learning.